Hey there folks, welcome you all to yet another vlog of mine, another Friday has caught up with us people, yes it has, flagons up to you all, if you don't have one of these, go and get one people, go and get one, and then listen to me prattle on for a little while if that sort of thing takes your fancy, <laughs> unless it's the morning or something, you know what I mean, wait till drink o'clock, you know what I mean, <laughs> calm down, calm down. Yes, another Friday has caught up with us. I've still, I'm still on a, my hiatus, my hiatus, hiatus, how do you say that word? Hiatus. Uh, still on my little break. <laughs> it's probably easier to say that. So I haven't gamed at all now for, it's, it's got to be more than two weeks, isn't it? A few weeks at least. I think it might be three. And it's been nice just to step away and do all of these other things that we talked about last week. Just, you know, letting my brain just vegetate, enjoy the sunshine and do other things. <clears throat> and it's, I mean, a lot of it's just come from being inside all of the time. But we talked about it last week, people. I'm not going to talk about it again. So I'm still on my little break. Apart from doing these fine vlogs for you, I, I mean, I'm basically doing these because the fancy takes me and, and so therefore I will do it. And I enjoy doing these and editing them together. And when I have my little chill out Friday evening, if it is on a Friday, usually it is. And when I have a little tip, I'll chat to you guys. And then after I've done this, I then sit and continue with the tipple while I'm editing it all together and all that sort of thing. So it's it's just therapeutic, especially at this point in time where we're, we're still, we're not locked down as much, but, you know, it, it, we're still confined. So it's, ni it's nice to have the, to have this to to look forward to and, and have my therapy session into the camera and all that sort of stuff. Like, so for anybody who is you know looking for gaming news straight off the bat then you can wind forward a little bit because i always start these vlogs and they tend to these vlogs tend to be very sort of how was my week here's a few things you know just general chit chat i will talk about the gaming newses that i will have put in the description and in the and in the title no doubt so i will come on to those those subjects absolutely we are a gaming channel after all but you know we'll prittle and prattle on about all sorts of little things, people. So, you know, if it is just the gaming news you're interested in, you can always slide forward. I will not be offended whatsoever because I'll never know that you slide forward. <laughs> well, I suppose I could look at the viewing times right enough, but I don't, people. I don't look at that sort of thing. Anyway, here's the thing, right? So I went out. I've, I've done well with my running this week. I did Monday, Wednesday, Friday again. And I'm doing around 8.5K at the minute. And I do it at lunchtime to take a break from working upstairs and at the desks and working from home at the moment have been for a long time and it's nice to just to get out and get that running i mean it just makes all the difference however so here's the thing right so for a long time now i've i've i've, I've always avoided the headphones that go in your ears because they always fall out on me they just never stay in and then a long time ago i found a pair that were dead cheap they're only a fiver and they were just uh, they had a little hook on them that hooked onto your ear and they didn't go, they weren't one of those that go in your ear. They just kind of went on the surface a bit, a little bit. And they were great, but they were wired. So I had to wire it to the phone, whether it be on my arm or whatever. So there was this cable all the time. Then, of course, things progressed and we don't have, you know, that port on the... Well, I've got the adapter, but I don't want to faff with it all. So in the end, I ended... I don't have those to show you, but what I do have... I'm going to... The, 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 this is a prologue to showing you what I've bought, <laughs> right? My new headphones. Mm. Flagons up, people. So here's what I had, right? So I got these Monster headphones and they're fantastic. They're really, really good. They're water resistant, sweat resistant, and they're fantastic. And the sound's really good. They're not very heavy. And the sort of noise cancelling as well, really, really nice. Can't remember what the model is, but uh, really, 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 really good. And I use them at the gym, and I've used them for running in the winter if it's sunny, because you know keeps your ears warm, I guess, a little bit. But of course, when the weather gets bad, when I mean, they are waterproof, to be fair, but you know, and but they are when you get hot as well, it, it, they're quite obtrusive. And they are handy at the gym because if I want to walk away from the equipment, I just hook them onto the equipment. <laughs> I normally put my towel on, but you're not allowed a towel at the gym anyway. I've not been to the gym for a while, but you're not allowed to put a towel on at the minute. You're not allowed to have a towel in the gym at all. You have to use paper tissues to throw them away. So anyway, they're good for hanging on somewhere if I want to, you know, put me water underneath if I don't want someone to nick it. But, you know, they've got their perks and they are great headphones and I'll use them just as general headphones if I wanted to go for a walk or what have you. But it was, they were, they're, they're obtrusive. Over the, 
over the head headphones are, you know, by their very nature going to be, you know, after a bit of wearing them, they might get a bit uncomfortable. They might, you know, I mean, like me, bold coot that I am, they might start hurting the top of my head. You know, just not because there's anything wrong with these. They're nice and spongy. They've got a nice soft, you know, but any headphones that I wear for any long period of time will eventually start to irritate me a little bit. So I wanted something that was less obtrusive to my head and I wanted something that would just go on my ears. On top of which, I've been using these for running over the last blah amount of weeks since we came out of, you know, well, for, for ages, for ages, for a long, long time. Uh, apart from last summer and autumn-ish, I was using these other ones that I'm about to show you. But these are, these at that point were my favourite because the sound is great on them. Really good bass, cancel out the noise, bang, really nice. But they were, these were expensive, like, I mean, I think at the time they were about... I think that well, I want to say two hundred quid. They were they were dear, you know. They were they were a dear pair of headphones, and they're really good. That's the monsters. I don't know how close up you got to those, but they are really smart. And the buttons are pretty simple. I mean, you've got one that attaches, you know, hooks up to the phone, gets them turned on. Once you've synced them, once the phone just remembers them, and and that's it really. The only downside to them was that they have this. Where is it? They have this touch thing on them, so it's like if you want to turn. If you want to go forward a track, you kind of slide your finger like that. And if you want to turn the volume up, you slide your finger up like that. Always gets it wrong. It does I never use it because it always gets it wrong. I try and fl slide forward and it mutes everything. Or try. <laughs> so that's the only downside of them. It's it's just not it's not clever. Like buttons are better. There's always better ways of doing it than that. So it, it's a good idea in theory, but it doesn't work in practice. But apart from that, fantastic. And it doesn't matter most of the time because the only thing I'm interested in most of the time is just turning it up or down. And if I've got the phone strapped to my arm in the winter, then I just, I can feel where the button is. I just turn it up like that. So I'm not that bothered about it. And I do from time to time chance flipping it forward <laughs> and end up muting it. But anyway, so anyway, so they're great, but they're a bit obtrusive on the head. So I then found... Uh, after much deliberating. Now, the reason that I've not bought a proper pair of just these light ones before is because they just always fall out, like I say. And I didn't want to spend a big amount of money on them and then find that they wouldn't stay in my ears. And I eventually found these uh, Curry's or PC, yeah, Curry's PC World. But they've got this link on them, right? Which is fine because you can slide the thing up and down to make it shorter and what have you. There's a little thing on it. And you can just slide that up so that it's a bit less long or whatever you know the back of your neck doesn't flap around as much but it does it does get annoying after especially if it's windy and uh and that thing can slide down if things start getting sweaty but basically you just put that at the back of your head and you put these in and you're off and these have been they've been fine you know they've done the job but you know when you want to look around and see if a car coming or whatever this thing's always tugging and pulling at the back of your back of your head and there's literally next to no base on them i can't remember what make they were Go, uh, go, Gobi, Goji, Goji, something like that. I can't see now. Old man glasses time, people. Goji, yeah, it looks like Goji or something like that from PC World. Uh, well, Curry's PC World. Anyway, but they've done a job, you know, and, and I was still of the frame of mind that I wanted a decent pair. And eventually the other day, <laughs> I came back from my run, I think it was on Wednesday, and I went, I looked in the mirror in the toilet, I just happened to look in a certain position. And because it's been so sunny, what's ended up is, because I've been wearing the big headphones, I've got this really brown face and head, but I've got white ears. <laughs> so I've just got these two white ears and a big brown head. So I, I went on to Amazon and was like, come on, make, plunge into something. Not too ridiculously priced, but something decent. And I've managed to find these MPOW headphones and i'm not getting by the way you know my channel's nowhere near big enough to be having sponsorships no one's told me to say this i've just bought these off amazon that's all that's happened and the uh, first time i've used them was today and they come in this little box charger box and obviously you get a cable with it the cable comes out just uh so what basically the point about the the the, the in well <laughs> The way that they charge is the headphones charge in the box and the box can charge itself. So, in fact, if you keep it charged, you know, blah amount of time and then you're off to the the gym for the week or whatever. I can't remember what the hours are battery life wise. You can always go and look that up yourselves. But basically, the little box uh, has a battery in it itself. The blue lights have come on. 
if you can see those. So it's fully charged at the minute. That will charge the headphones, whether it's plugged in or not, because there is a battery inside there that charges the headphones that are inside. And then, of course, you would plug that in and you, know, you can charge to it both at once when your headphones are in it, which is fantastic. Now, the other great thing is, so you just have this little thing at the front. And the headphones are inside. I'm not sure how clearly you're seeing all of this because it's got a little bit dark for some reason. And it's really, really smart because they've got these little, little magnets inside the box. So they do pop in when you put them in the right position. There you go. And it just pops in and pulls it tight. There's the magnets so they don't fall out. And the minute you put them in, they start charging. And they're two separate individual headset pieces and they once you've once you've turned them on for the first time they'll immediately sync with your phone and every time you put them back in the box they'll stop syncing with the phone and every time you take them out the minute you take them out they just start syncing with the phone again and it says you know bluetooth on and off you go you don't even have to press buttons on them they just you take them out and they're just working and the the noise cancellation on them is fantastic the they hook on really nice and tight. They don't move around. I mean, this ear was actually perfect. This ear is always the ear that I have a bit of bother with. And I think only a few times in the run, they weren't falling off or anything. It was just that a few times in the run, it just I just wanted to twist it back a little bit. Like it had just sort of, only a comfort thing. That was it. Um, and that was it. And these ones, obviously, they go in your ear properly. And the, but I tell you this, the bass on them is awesome. Once you've got them hooked on right, the bass is fantastic. I mean, can, the, the bass is probably as good as the bass on those other ones. I mean, I, I struggle to find a, a difference. The only difference is, I'm going to take these off because they, I mean, that, just to let you see them on my head. I mean, that's the, the size of them. So they're really light, really unobtrusive, really smart, no big cable. And here's the beauty of it. 30 quid, people. Only 30 quid. And I couldn't believe it for that amount. I mean, I was not expecting the quality that I got. I mean, I looked at all the reviews and stuff. And, you know, there was a... There's always some people... I mean, look how easy that was. I just popped them in and just went... You know, magnet just took them in. Um, there's always people that say, oh, shit, they turned up and there was something wrong. Yeah, okay. There's always moments like that with any product you'll get, you know. But, I mean, it had four and three-quarter stars, I think, out of about 8,000 people that had, that had reviewed the product. And at that point, I thought, just take the plunge and get them. But I tell you, the first time I used them was at lunchtime today, and it was absolutely fantastic. Absolutely delighted with those. MPOW, they're actually Amazon Choice at the moment, if you go and look for running headphones. And for me, that's just perfect. I mean, that's me sorted now. And I'll be going for MPOW next time again as well. And I looked at the previous model, which were called Light Fire or something like that. These ones are called Solo, I think. And yeah, these Solo ones are... 29.99 at the minute so if you've been looking for a decent pair and you're like me where these things always kind of fall off highly recommend those i mean i did 8.5k today people perfect all the way all, all the way there all the way back and yeah i mean i just couldn't believe the quality of the sound it's absolutely amazing it's proper and the volume of it as well you know sometimes i turn up these sort of headphones and it's like mm, it sounds a bit tinny and it only goes so loud and you can still hear all the traffic and so i couldn't hear anything like you've proper got to watch when you're going over a road just <laughs> can't hear anything so yeah absolutely fantastic really really chuffed with that so that was my little my little treat along with i'm not going to show you these because it's not very exciting but i did buy some new running socks uh you know the little ones with no they just cover you come to your ankles basically but they had like proper padding where because you get a lot of uh, trainer socks as they're called or you know i think that's what they're called but they don't have like the, the, the whole sock is just one layer you know it's just like one piece of cotton or whatever these ones and they weren't expensive it was like a pack of 12 for 10.99 or something but these ones had like a thick a thick section of cotton at the front where the toes are which is where the toes are always rubbing when you're running and all of the socks that i had upstairs they, they had all either got a hole in them from that or they were starting to get a hole in them from that. So it's got a right thick bar at the front of them, and it's got a, a sort of lip at the back at the heel to stop them sliding down into the trainer if, if they're trying to. And it's got little bits of padding here and there in other places, I think on the arch and stuff like that. So they're really, really smart. So yeah, I was delighted with those as well. 
So that was it was a good run today, and it was the fastest run I'd done in ages. I did uh, eight point four k in. Let's have a look. Shall we try and find out, people? Because I've forgotten now. It was eight point four k in. Oh, here we go. Feed. So 8.39k, <laughs> we'll call it 8.4 people, in 47 minutes and 34, sorry, 40, yeah, 47 minutes, 34 seconds, which at a pace of about 5 minutes 40 per k. So that's not bad. I mean, pretty chuffed with that. 47.34 is the fastest I've done in a long time. It was a really good run. It was beautiful weather. Uh, it was hot on the way back, though, blimey. So there you are. So anyway, great purchase. Really delighted with it, and I can't be more. I can't be more delighted with it. In fact, I'm not actually sure when I will use those other. I'll keep those other running headphones, the little ones, just in case something happens with these ones. It's always good to have a backup. Just stick them in a drawer somewhere. But they won't get used unless there's an emergency situation. And I will use the other ones though, because I t every now and then I want to listen to stuff be it music or whatever, and it's later at night or something, and I don't want to disturb the neighbours, I'll stick headphones on. I do have my Sony ones for that, but every now and then I use those ones, just for a change of pace. So there you are. There you are, people. I was delighted with that little purchase. Shall we move on? <laughs> M-Power, Amazon, 30 quid. Do it! You know, do it. Ooh, I'm going to have another sip before we get going. We do have gaming news. The PlayStation 5 software update, people. It came yesterday, something like that. Now... I wouldn't get to it. Well, to be fair, at least there was something on it. With the PS4, all we got was uh, you know, better stability. My stability was fucking stable as fuck on the PlayStation 4. <laughs> Used to get a stability update every fucking three weeks. Uh, or every week, even. Anyway, I'm going to have to use my glasses, people. I can't see for shit. Hello? Right, yes, PS5 software update came, and I'm not going to go through all of it, but the key, there were some key points were you can now transfer games to the to an external hard disk drive, but you can't play them from an external hard disk drive. This is to save you having to download them all again. Now, the it still takes a little bit of time to transfer stuff from the SSD to solid state drive, which is what's in your PlayStation 5, to a hard disk drive. Well, you can transfer it to another solid state drive, I assume, so that might speed things up anyway. So, it it's a lot faster than to download, a, you know, a, a 80 gigabyte game again, though. It will transfer in a much quicker time than that. So, it's just something, just a, a packing mule if you want. You know, if it's like, well, I don't want to totally get rid of it because I might come back to it later or whatever. So, I haven't actually tested moving anything onto anything. I don't actually have a hard drive hooked up to my playstation 5 i have got one hooked up to my xbox series x the difference with the xbox series x is theirs is a little bit better because you can't and they've had it since launch this you can put stuff on an external hard drive you can't you can't play xbox series x games enhanced games but you can play the anything backward compatible from the hard drive you just won't see the benefit of the faster load times and all that sort of stuff i mean it'll be a little bit faster but it won't be as super quick as the ssd it just won't use that architecture properly. So, but at least, like, I think at the moment I've got all of my Xbox 360 backward compatible titles on the external hard drive, and I can just play those. I don't have to move them onto the the SSD. They're just on there, and I can play them straight from the hard drive. Can't You can't, well, I know they don't go that far back, but you can't do that with your PS4 titles on the PlayStation 5. So there, it's not quite as good as the Xbox One, but it's still uh, a jump forward. So, good to see that kick in. I mean, interestingly, we've still not got the bloody... You know, they've got this... The guy showed off where you put the memory chip to expand your its storage. There's a big slot empty in the BS5. And we still can't put one in. Like, they still haven't told us it, it, it will recognise or what chips we can use or anything. And we're now... I mean, when did it launch? November. So, you know, what's that? Five Five months or whatever it is? Six months? And we still can't put extra storage capacity in our PS5. They did this with the PS4 so far as... And, and there's also things like, you know, there's barely any themes. There's hardly anything to, to get for it. They did this with the PS4 as well. The, the At the end of the PS3 life cycle, there was so much stuff going on with the PS3 with themes and all sorts of things. And then you went onto the PS4 and it was just this barren interface. It was a great interface, but it was barren and void of much. 
in the way of functionality and it just tumbleweed floating through when it came to anything to do with you know the cool stuff and then it just builds and builds and builds but it's like why could you not have prepped this you know what i mean you must have had teams of people working on stuff like this surely a crawler you didn't clearly but anyway it always baffles me brain as to why we have to wait an entire lifetime life cycle of a console to get all the, the little things that you'd want but anyway it is a boost people to get the the, the extra storage uh, oh, here's another cool thing as well. You can actually move... But they haven't actually said which games yet, but you can actually you, you can move part of a game onto the hard drive and leave the rest of it on the PS5 SSD. An example of which would be Call of Duty, say, and don't, take, don't quote me on that game because the, I don't know what the list of games is, but some games will allow you to shift certain parts of content or delete certain parts of content... So you might say finish the campaign of Call of Duty and want to shove, shove it onto the hard disk drive in case you wanted to play it again for trophies later on rather than just keep it on there. And you can shove the campaign onto the HDD but you can keep the multiplayer packs on your SSD on the... I'm getting too, too many letters, people. <laughs> you can keep it on the PS5 without shifting it. And then you can still play your multiplayer but you don't have the huge mongus campaign on the on the ps5 taking up room that you don't don't need it to so that's pretty cool like that i like that and i suspect that that'll be the same on the xbox series x to be fair when games start doing it a 120 hertz at 1080p has been patched up so you can now play if game provides it you can play up to 120 hertz at 1080p i think people were hoping for 1440p it'll probably come at some point and you can also set what trophies to screenshot to save space. So here's what happened with... I'm going to have another sip of this, people. Here's what happened with... On the PS4, if, if you've not owned a PS4, you... When you get a trophy, it took a screenshot. When it pings in, it takes a screenshot. And sometimes that screenshot was really cool, and sometimes it was literally a black screen with a ping on it and the, the trophy popping in. And it was just a, a JPEG or a PNG, whatever it was. Just, a, just a, an image file. However, on the PlayStation 5, so I've still got all of my captures, not that I'll ever look at them, on the PlayStation 4. And on the PlayStation 5, I think it takes a picture and also takes a video file. It's like a three-second video file or something like that. And it, they do that because there was a lot of people saying, well, hang on a minute, the, the pictures you're taking haven't got anything decent on them apart from the trophy popping in. Can't see what's happening on the screen. So what they've done is they've said, right, fine, won't give you a, an image. We'll just give it a time span of video with it popping in. No, I mean, I don't know what people are going to do with these files, but a lot of people just, you know, they, because they're now doing it as a video file, of course, that takes up more room, and then you've got, you know, a video file for every trophy popping in. So what they've added is that you can go into the settings and say, well, I don't want you to record a trophy popping. But I think you might be able to turn it off completely, but you can, you can say that you don't want it, you only want it to pop in for platinums and gold, say but you don't want to, to, to do it for silver and bronze. So that would save up a whole pile of room as well, which is quite cool. So that was quite a cool little feature to add. And that's pretty much what I took from the... There's there's more to the update. You can always go to the PlayStation blog and see what, they, what, what more was added. What other news did we have? Square Enix have come out and said, We're not for sale! Fuck off and leave us alone! <laughs> that was the official statement that they came out with. I think you'll find... <laughs> <laughs> there was all sorts of Bloomberg reports saying that uh, the, the bank or somebody had said there'd been interest from multiple parties in purchasing Square Enix. And Square Enix have basically come out officially and said, we're not for sale, we're not interested in selling, you know. Now, that doesn't mean that there isn't parties interested, and it doesn't mean that they wouldn't be interested if somebody came along and said, here's a gazillion pounds, to some degree. I mean, they'd probably listen, but I don't think they are. I mean, they have said they're not interested in selling. So I think that pretty much, you know, but what they did say was they said that the minute that the story came out, the shares went up by about 40 percent or something. Stupid. Well, I think it was, wasn't as much as that, but it, the, the share prices shot up. So they've got a feeling that it was just the bank trying to get the prices up, but they are not for sale, people. Frankly, it's one of those studios. That I don't really I don't think I want to see a stu that studio be. Certainly, if one of those parties was Xbox or PlayStation, I'm, I'm not sure I would want to. I don't know. I think of things like Final Fantasy and I feel like it's already kind of a PlayStation thing. You know what I mean? Like the, the Final Fantasy VII Remake is still only on PS5, PS4. 
I mean, it's supposed to be coming to Xbox, but it doesn't seem to be happening anytime soon, does it? But anyway, I mean, if I want, if it was going to go to any platform, I would, I would want it to go to PlayStation. That one, I think it fits PlayStation better. But Xbox, I mean, it'd be a prime purchase for them if they want to get into the Japanese market properly. But anyway, they're saying they're not interested, and frankly, I'm thinking that's probably a good thing. A loose connection well strong connection but not connected anymore the new there is a new io interactive studio being opened in barcelona barcelona you're welcome and io interactive for those that don't know are the people that make hitman uh so they're going to be working on now they were a square enix company and they managed to, uh, well, Square Enix Studio, and they managed to to somehow get their indie freedom. So they're now an indiv- independent developer, and also managed to keep their Hitman franchise as well, which is quite cool. So Hitman Two and Three, or whatever it is that have come out recently, were done by them without Square Enix, which is quite cool. And they've also managed, which I am super excited about, and this was news that you've probably heard a long time back, well, months back that they have also now got the rights to make a brand new 007 James Bond game, which will be a whole thing of its own, not connecting itself to the movies. It will be an original story with a, a diff- you know, I don't think they're going for any of the voice actors from the films. They're really looking at making it its own animal, which is super exciting. I mean, I feel like we're still going to get the theme tune and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, super excited. I think if, if anyone can actually give us a James Bond game that's probably more suited to... The James Bond games of the past have all kind of been action shooters, and that's not really what James Bond is. You know, there is action stuff, but he's a spy, you know. So, you know, it does fit that Hitman sort of vibe. Maybe not as sneaky as Hitman. You, know, you don't want as sneaky as that. You still want some action and, you know, cool scenes and stuff. But I'd certainly like it to be a third-person type thing, I think. But I, I'm really excited to see what they do with that. So this new Barcelona studio we're working on, double it will be working on a Hitman, it'll be working on 007, and it will be working on a new IP. And this joins the other IO studios, which are in Sweden, and I want to say Denmark, but it might not be Denmark, I might have got it wrong. <laughs> I think it's Sweden and Denmark, but you can correct me. Uh, and those, they are all, they, they cut, they're all, I think they said, all elite studios, and they will be trying to gather the best developers in the in the world to come to Barcelona. They put it right in the centre of Barcelona, so they're keen to get, you know, people to move there and be part of their team. Here's a good one. Resident Evil Village have, they've, they've released the, or Capcom, have released the performance that we'll get from Resident Evil Village. Now, I took a screenshot of this. Let's have a look. So here's what we can expect. We've got for PlayStation 5. This is quite cool, right? And I'm quite surprised we're getting it this high. I'm enjoying this today, people. On PlayStation 5, PlayStation 5, we can expect a 4K HDR 60 FPS option with no ray tracing, right? So we're going to get 4K 60 FPS and a HDR option. 60 FPS 4K, people. That I like that. And this is, I mean, if you watch any of my previous vlogs and podcasts at some point i'll have said to you how i do not believe that this generation of console will be able to provide 4k 60 fps on open world games right but i think it is entirely feasible that we will get this sort of stuff in 4k 60 fps but obviously without the ray tracing stuff that takes up so much you know bar and when the new engines start coming out as well unreal engine 5 and they've got all these alternate ways of doing ray tracing stuff which looks so much they look just as cool I and mean, it just looks amazing we're going to see some fantastic stuff this gem but the fact that we can get a game like this at 4k 60 fills me with a lot of joy people so playstation 5 is going to get a 4k 4k hdr 60 fps option it will also get a with tra- ray tracing a 4k hdr 45 fps now here's a i fucking love this right i've been ranting on For years, and any of you people that have been with me a long time will have heard me say this umpteen times. Why has it always got to be either 30 or 60? Why? Why is there not... Well, we can't give you 60 FPS, it just don't work, so you're just going to have to put up with 30. Why? Give me 45, give me 50, you know what I mean? Like, give me something in between, which is still way better than 30. But we've always had these caps put on games, but it can't go above 30. And... I love this. I fucking love it. It's like, you can have 45. Give me that in more games as well. Because I'm sure that 45 FPS is going to look fucking brilliant. I I bet you it looks amazing. 
I bet it looks smooth as shit. You know what I mean? I bet you'd probably be hard stuck to see the difference between 45 and 60, you know, without sitting with it for a while. So I'm really excited about the fact that we're seeing something like, you know, we're seeing a 45 FPS marker being shoved down on this game. Xbox Series X, 4K HDR 60 FPS. Xbox Series X with ray tracing, 4K HDR 45 FPS. So you've got the same on both platforms. Xbox Series S is doing 1440p HDR 45 FPS. Uh, to be fair, very impressive for that console. Xbox Series S with ray tracing, 30 frames per second. So a bit less impressive, but hey ho, it is the it is the tinier machine and it is the, the entry level machine. That's fair enough. We get that. 1440p by HDR at 30 FPS. I mean, I can't be doing 30 FPS anymore, but you know, blimey. PlayStation 4 Pro, we're going into the old consoles now. PlayStation 4 Pro is 1080p at 60 FPS. Pretty decent, that, to be fair, for the Pro. PlayStation 4 Pro in high resolution. 4K HDR 30 FPS. PlayStation 4 original, I assume this is. 900p, 45 FPS. Pretty decent. Xbox One X, 1080p, 60 FPS. Xbox One X in high resolution, 4K HDR 30. Same as the PS4. Xbox One, 900p at 30 FPS. Yeah, I mean, that's a... If you compare that Xbox One original or S to... PlayStation 4. Yeah, so the PlayStation 4 is doing 900p at 45 FPS. The Xbox One can only do it at 30 FPS, so it's the lower of the lot. Stadia, not that we're interested, 1080p, 60 FPS, or 4K, 60 FPS. 4K is upscaled using dynamic resolution. So that's I'm super I'm super impressed with that. I mean that that that's you know if that's what we can expect from if that's what we can expect from this generation of games that are coming along, then fantastic. Where were we, people? Where am I on my list? Well, actually, just before I do move on, I, uh, it's almost it's almost shocking, in fact, that I'm considering buying Resi Village. <laughs> I'm the only zombie in this village. <laughs> I'm not keen on the name, to be fair. I, I, I'm getting more and more stoked about the game. I think more because it seems to have all these new gen. You know, it, well, for a start off, they said they'd built it for new gen specifically. And we're going to try and rein it in for the other ones. So I feel like we're going to see something special from it in the in the cut. Oh, actually, no, I was about to jump too far forward as well. There. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm getting super excited for it, even though I know that it's a horror game and I'll struggle to play large portions of it at a time because it would just freak me out. <laughs> and it's all it's shocking, really, that I've still not finished Resident Evil, whatever it was, uh, Resident Evil... Uh, two remake and i still haven't bought or played resident evil 3 remake but resident evil 2 remake i'm just dying to finish that game and i keep putting it off i mean i got so far to the end as well on that playthrough on the channel and i keep saying to you guys that i would go back and do it and i never have uh yeah sorry so there is a they've announced a bunch of dates of when the next demo for resident evil village is out evil 4 is being yeah the resi resi 4 is being brought to virtual reality people resi 4 vr and as for the oculus quest 2 it will be done in first person and you'll be able to interact with everything in the world and blah blah, blah. My, my my curiosity on that is like i haven't i've only i've never i've only put on a virtual headset once and it was a uh play play expo blackpool here and they had an ocular i think it was oculus rift and it's the only one i've ever seen and it was really it was, it was just i think it you were in a mine or something and you were looking around there was a huge depth to it and it was just it was amazing but i'm i've not played a game on vr so far as like firstly i don't know if i could sit through an entire resi game with something like that attached to my face but i know that the oculus rifts and all that are getting super light they're getting less cables and we know now that the next version of the playstation 5 vr is only going to have one cable and it's a usb cable i mean that's fantastic i might get super tempted but i need to see some big titles coming out also what like when you're that close like you've got the images that close to your face how good are those images going to look now? I mean, that is an old game, people. You know what I mean? I mean, it, it's fine and it's HD'd up and everything, but 
they, it's not going to look that great, is it? I wouldn't have thought. Like if you're first person as well, you know, so everything becomes more magnified. And so I'm not overly sure just how good that will look. It's not like they're remaking it. I think they're just adapting what they have to be first person and then shoving it on a VR. And, you know, we don't know, though. Maybe they'll make something special of it. I mean, it's a classic title, but, then you know, I still don't know just how far they're going to go with the VR, you know, until we've got like a pair of glasses we put on that provide... Yeah, you just feel like you're in a whole new space, you know, like it'd be interesting to see. I think it's something that needs to keep developing. I'm glad Sony are still getting on with it. I'm a bit confused as to why Microsoft aren't getting interested in it, especially because I feel like I feel like an Oculus Rift should work with the power of the Xbox Series X. And I would have thought that was something that Phil Spencer might have been thinking, you know what, why can't we, why should, why, why don't we get the Oculus Rift to work with ours? Then we don't have to develop one and we can start bringing Oculus Rift titles to the Xbox Series X. I mean, that to me would make perfect sense. I mean, I know that it's not the biggest market in the world, but there is an interest there. There are people that are excited about VR. There's obviously a market there because, you know, Sony and Ocula, well, Oculus especially have keep, you know, spending all this money, making them better and what have you. So... Yeah, I'm super curious as to why Microsoft have just... Made, they all almost just written it off as like, we're not doing that, this is what we do. But for me, if I was Phil, I'd be looking at I'd be looking at ways to get the Oculus Rift playing on an Xbox Series X. If he's not already, I'm sure the man's got multiple ideas, but... <laughs> Love Big Phil. But yeah, I mean, I would be looking at that. Because... I don't know much about how... I mean, I assume there has to be some form of software installed in order for the product to work and blah but you know that's just an app like anything else and then it's just a case of having the games being able to be read by the the xbox series x and, and these consoles are really just big pcs now you know i don't think there's that much bespoke in them i think they are doing the i mean these are great architectures they are i mean i'm not taken away from the fact that we've spent a long time building these things with new architectures that aren't even a lot of them aren't even on pc yet the speed of these io architectures they've put in for this super fast and everything so you know it is impressive but my point being i feel like a pc product should be able to work on an xbox series x with the right patch and you know so i'd be i'd be very surprised if it's something they've not been thinking about or are still investigating to see if they can make it work and then you've already got PC players, perhaps, that were thinking, maybe I'll get an X, and then they're like, I've got an Oculus Rift already, and now I can use it on my Xbox, and I can use it on my PC, or, you know, stuff like that, you know, but it certainly op opens up a whole market that you've not got yet, so, and, and you don't have to develop the product, all you've got to do is make the product work on your console, you know, and clearly there wasn't enough power in the old consoles to do it, so, you know, even if it worked on the, I don't know how the Oculus thing's working, whether they've dumped the old one, and now they're on Oculus 2, quest or whatever if there's different versions of it but a version of oculus working on xbox series x would absolutely you know get a whole bunch of people interested in brand new games a brand new facility and your machine you don't even have to do any of the, 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 the development work for it it's just there you just have to make it work software wise on your machine and get the games on it so yeah be interesting to see if they do do, do anything with it but at every turn it just seems to be that xbox just aren't interested in virtual virtual reality but i i think it would be worth them looking into absolutely you know just don't make your own one use oculus job done i'll i'll get phil on it all right <laughs> you're welcome well there you are people i think that's probably it hey, hey, is this a short one or is it a regular one i can't remember i felt like i didn't have a huge amount to talk about but it looks like we have been talking for about 40 minutes people you know what i'm like so there you are that is if i keep talking i really uh, i will just be talking for the sake of talking the sun is still shining. It's coming up for 10 to 6 of the evening. And I'm going to tuck into... Well, I'm going to finish this one first, which is my first beer. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to edit all of this together. I might even put some nice video footage up behind me, people, because you know that's the sort of thing I like to bring you guys. It makes it more interesting than staring at this. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, there you are, people. I thank you for sticking with me for... You know, the, the fact that I'm not putting up daily content at the moment for gameplay and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, sticking, keeping your subs with me and, and looking forward to these vlogs or, you know, hoping that I'll come back and, and do and, and do some of the some of the gameplay stuff and the Let's Play stuff, which I will do. You know, the buzz will come back to me at some point, people. Do not worry ye not, worry ye not. 
And, you know, when it does come back, all the glory and we'll get back to it. But but thanks for sticking with me. I do really appreciate it. Keep giving me comments. Keep, you know, I will reply to everyone. And, uh, you know, as long as you're nice. <laughs> you know, we don't reply to dickheads on this channel, people. We just reply to good people. You know what I mean? So, yeah, but keep leaving me comments about any of the things I've talked about today or anything you're just thinking about in the world of gaming. Sometimes people just leave me random comments attached to a video that I happen to put up or, you know, something. Keep chatting to me, people. I'm still here just because I'm not posting up every day and I'm just doing this once a week. Doesn't mean that I'm not interested in chatting to you guys. I am interested in what you guys are playing. I am interested in if you guys have seen a game and I've not seen it and you want my opinion on it or you want me to go check it out or, you know, anything at all, just... Throw me a message and I'll, I'll, I'll try and get back to you. So there you are. It has been. Yes, it has. An honour and a privilege serving for you in this vlog of mine today. And I shall see you in the next one, folks. Take it easy. Bye.